Greetings, today on my Focus RS, I am installing the Mountain V3 exhaust. Here it is then, it's an exciting day. We are finally getting our new exhaust and it is the Mountain V3 exhaust and it looks absolutely awesome. It's so shiny, I mean, look, I mean, I just, it's just so reflective on the back box there. It just looks awesome. Got the cool like mountain little plate around there. Just looking at it, having got it out of the packaging, everything looks like unbelievably awesome quality. If you're into like welds, um, these welds are just so beautiful. Not just the coloration, but you can just kind of see, like that's exactly what you want to see when you see welds. It's just absolutely beautifully done. Um, so supplied, we get all of our clamps, of course. We have double slip joints, which use these clamps. We've got V-band clamps then to attach the tips and also to attach the pipe that goes up over the rear axle. So all the different parts seem lovely and light, you know, like I can lift this no problem at all. I could probably lift it with my little finger, it's so light. The Mountain do say that the whole system, once it's put together, is 10% lighter than the OE system, and I can believe it. I mean, the heaviest part is, of course, the big back box, um, but even then, that's not that bad. The tips then are beautifully polished. They have the laser etched Mountain logo, four and a half inch, Look at that, very nice. Again, they use the V-band connection onto the back box, you see there and over there. All the tubing then is three inch mandrel bent 304 series stainless steel. Um, so you know it's good. And yeah, I can just tell that it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna sound awesome, it's gonna look awesome. And it should fit together really well because it does look really well made as I was saying. So yes, at this point, let's talk a little bit more about our tips. One interesting thing is that Whenever I opened it up, I saw that there's a brand new exhaust valve motor already attached to this tip. Um, but it, that kind of confused me because on the website it says that you have to swap it over. Uh, but obviously this is much more convenient. We don't have to bother removing the one from the stock exhaust. You can see our valve in there. Not that it would be a difficult thing to do, but you know. <laughs> Every little helps, you can see our valve. So the tips are really nice and big and they say that test of a proper performance exhaust tip is can you fit your fist in it? So if I go sideways and we go in, the answer is yes. So we know it's good. So yes, they look absolutely fantastic. Um, but before we get to the install, we do want to do a bit of protection on these. And I am going to be using G-Technic Wheel Armor C5. This is heat resistant, which is obviously a good thing whenever we're playing with an exhaust where we have very hot exhaust gases coming out the end. With exhausts, um, you do get like black soot coming out the back, which tends to be really sticky onto the steel. And that can be very, very annoying to clean off. So using this C5 from G-Technic, that will make the maintenance much easier. That black stuff will just wipe right off really quick whenever we're doing our maintenance washes. And that will last for a good couple of years which is awesome. We do need to prep the surfaces first and then we will apply and I'm going to apply two coats so leaving a couple of hours in between coats and then that will be them ready for installation. Right then I'm going to use this 3M VHB surface cleaner and this has basically an alcohol wipe in there so that will remove any kind of grease, any kind of contamination that we have got from the factory although they do look lovely and clean you never really know for sure. And then G-Technic are kind enough to provide a bunch of these little applications so I'll get some drops on here, then spread it around our surfaces, and then pretty much immediately we'll use a nice clean microfiber um, to remove any excess, and then we will leave it to cure. All right then, I'm gonna do a little bit of a comparison. So before we do the install, I need to get the before. So I'm gonna use this app that I've got on my phone here just to measure decibels. And I know that this isn't gonna be the most accurate thing in the world, but it should give a good indication as to the difference between standard and the Mountain V3 exhaust. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this for cold start. And then once we have the install finished, I'll come back and I'll do it again and we'll show the side by side difference between stock and V3. And of course, before we get to the installation, we have to remove the stock exhaust. So we are going to start at the rear where we have to cut part of the pipe. Obviously our exhaust starts way back there where we connect to the cat. 
it comes along. We have this sort of pancake section, which is probably the most restrictive part of the exhaust. Um, and then the rest of the tubing, I think it's 2.25 inch tubing. Um, so of course with the mount tune, we'll be opening that up to three inches. Um, but yeah, in terms of installation, you can see that our exhaust goes up here and it goes over the rear axle here. So um, in order to get this out without having to drop the whole rear of the car. We basically have to cut through our existing pipe in order to get it off. Obviously this is a bend right here. You don't want to cut through a bend because in the future if you want to put the standard exhaust back on, um, that would be a nightmare to try and get a sleeve on a bend. So you want to cut on a flat section. So typically people will cut up here, maybe halfway between the hanger and that bend. Um, so we'll, I'll see if I can get my saw in there. I'm not sure if I can with this Summit Brace in. Um, so I might end up um, cutting just on this straight section right here. Um, but either way, we do need to cut through there. So obviously to cut through that, you're gonna need a tool that is able to cut through metal. And this is what I will be using. This is my weapon of choice. Basically, it's a reciprocating saw, um, often known as a sawzall. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is a pretty beefy one. <laughs> So we gotta be careful, of course. We are cutting through metal. So for safety reasons, I am going to wear eye protection. You don't wanna get any little bits of metal in your eyes or anywhere else for that matter. All right then, now that we have our exhaust cut, we can get our back box, which includes our stock tips off. Obviously we have our rubber, you see we're nice and loose now, we have our rubber, and then we have our hanger in here. So you, mean, you could shimmy this out with um, whatever kind of tool you want, um, but I have got this, which is a specific um, exhaust hanger removal tool. So it sort of slots in one side, and then you just push the hanger out there, so. As soon as you take this one out, this is gonna like drop. So you're gonna to wanna to be holding it in some way, either with your legs or with maybe a jack or with a person helping you out doing the install. Um, but either way, just, you know, don't just pop it out and expect it to not fall on top of you. Then this side, of course, if you have your exhaust valve still in operation, i.e. you don't have an exhaust valve delete plug, you will need to disconnect your exhaust valve at this point um, because if you don't, then it'll be connected via the cable and you'll be removing your exhaust and it'll just rip it out. So um, yeah, disconnect, but of course I have the exhaust valve delete at the moment. Um, so I have just this little plug in here, so there's nothing to remove. So I'm good to go to remove our next exhaust hanger. This third hanger, um, which is just right above the axle that we need to remove as well, because it is attached to the rear part of the pipe, which we have just cut. All right, so that is the last one out. So now I need to shimmy back out, and then we can fish the back box out. So there we go, that is our stock back box out. Wee bit heavy, wee bit awkward to do by yourself, but you know, as you can see, it is definitely possible to do it by yourself. Um, so that's cool. Now we're heading away on up that way. We're gonna remove the V-band clamp, which joins the cat back to the cat. All right then, this then is the V-band clamp that we need to remove, which is connecting our stock exhaust to our downpipe. So we need to remove this nut, which is 16 mil. So you can see like it is like for sure like loose, but we just need to pry these apart just to fully get it off basically. Um, so, I mean, it's gonna be a bit awkward and difficult, but um, just gonna try and like get something in here and like pry them apart and then that'll come off and then we'll be ready to get this bad boy completely removed. So there we go, that is it out. And so what I ended up doing was these um, grips here, I sort of like managed to like shimmy it in there and I was able to like, sort of expand it out just with this middle section right here where it's like the thinnest um, and that did the trick and it just popped out. I need to go back to our hanger removal tool and get it done. So for the midsection hanger it's just right above the pancake section here.
There we go, that is our exhaust fully removed now. And this is the rubber that we were just getting that hanger out of. Um, it is a little bit awkward up here because of the heat shield and also the uh, drive shaft as well. So it was a bit difficult to get the tool up in there. Um, but I just had to manipulate it up there and I was able to do it just about. Um, on the subject of hangers while we're talking about them, um, the stock hangers are, I mean, oh, they're obviously, you know, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit squishy. They're a little bit soft. Um, but I haven't really heard too many people complaining a lot about them and indeed Munchen or anyone Munchen or Miltech or whoever They don't really say that you need to change your rubber isolators So for now we are just going to use the standard RS isolators and then if we do have any issues with the new exhaust like clanging around and hitting off stuff Then I will replace them no problem. So yeah now that we have our exhaust fully removed we can start getting our new nice mountain exhaust in place. Now that I have this midsection of pipe out, you can really see the extent um, that this, what I call a pancake section, this middle part where our hanger was, um, you know, it's just so, like if I zoom out a little bit, it's like, zo it's just so flattened out. It's obviously gonna be somewhat of a restriction that we're now not going to have um, once we get our mountain exhaust put in place, along with the fact, of course, that our pipework is a larger bore as well. Um, so yeah, very exciting, and this is just odd. Um, but uh, yeah, out with the old, in with the new. All right then, the first section that I'm going to do is the smallest section that we get in our mountain kit, which is the part that connects to the cat. Um, so we do need to reuse the stock V-band clump now that I have it out, I can show you a little bit closer how that works. You can see that the bolt has this like groove part and that has to sit on the top of the V and then that goes through. And then we have another sort of washer type thing which also has a V shape which we need to sit on top like that. And then the nut goes on like that. So we are gonna start off though with this stuff out um, to give us the maximum amount of like prying apart ability um, because this is going to be a little bit tight to get on um, so we need to get it on both sides of course and then uh, this will mate in with our cat so you can see here I have got the v-band back onto the cat it was fairly easy and um, now there are little like sort of teeth that are folded bits of metal around the end of the cat you don't want to go beyond that you just want to be right on the very edge and um, so it should be you know like movable like around like that so now we can grab our mountain piece we can give it a wee push so that is sort of like mated together and we want then the lip of the V-band clamp to come over the ridge of the mountain piece, um, which it is, so that looks pretty good to me. So now um, we put this together like we were saying before. There we go, so now I can go and get my tool and do that in nice. So of course it is still a little bit loose in here, so we do want to position everything. Just make sure that everything is meeting correctly before we fully tighten this up. That's pretty good. All right then, the next part that we are grabbing is this part which is mostly straight. It's the straightest of the sections. It's the longest of the sections. So we need this and then we need one of our clumps, the regular type clumps, um, which are of course big and chunky. It doesn't matter which one you lift, they're all the same. They all say 78 on the sides, so that's all good. When tightening these up, we do need a socket and it is a 13 mil socket that we need right there. And then of course, this little section needs to be with the curved bits matching up with the, the curved bits either side. Um, so when it, it wants to be tight like that. The part that we just put in that connects to the cat has a section like this. Um, so that is what we slot this into. Of course our clamp needs to be on first. Before we tighten it of course though, we do need to get our hanger in place. You can see it's just right there. So we'll slot this into the section that we just installed. We'll make sure that our exhaust hanger is fully lined up, get it into the exhaust isolator, and then we will tighten up our clamp. So I just need to loosen this clamp a little bit, which I can do by hand. Yeah. So that's just going to slide that on out of the way. 
So I don't know if you can see, but these two bits of metal, so we got the metal on the outside, which obviously with these cutaways is what's going to like squish down with our clump. And then we have the inner bit. And now this pipe that we have here, this needs to slot in between. Carefully line it up and then push it in. So I've pushed it in as far as it seems to go and it does indeed line up nicely with our isolator. So we just need to manipulate that and because it is, like we were saying earlier, fairly soft rubber, it's not too bad to manipulate. Of course then because I haven't clamped down there we can rotate it to a degree as well. Um, so we just want to rotate it such that it is sort of equidistant in this tunnel brace sort of thing um, that goes like up and it separates the drive shaft here from this part of the exhaust, this black thing here. Um, so we just wanna like use our fingers and kind of, once it's it feels like there's a, a good, like reasonable space either side, like even, then that's us good to go. And that like, so just about touching the middle of my finger I'm just touching a wee bit more there, so I just rotate it a little bit that way. Nice, I think that's pretty even. So now I can tighten up my clamp. So I'm going to position this like right over the cutaway sections. Pretty much right on the edge, but maybe like a little bit in from the edge. There we go. Beautiful. Now our next bit should be a little bit less cramped. All right, the next section then is this next sort of relatively straight bit, but it does have a bit of a curve at the end. Um, there's no hanger on this bit, so we just get it in and I'll tighten the clamp um, to a degree, but we may need to loosen it just to adjust it around once we get onto the next section, which is the section that goes up and over the axle. Um, but anyway, yeah, we'll get it in place. Of course, we'll do that with another one of our clamps. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to actually tighten this clamp just yet because I want to get this other section in place first and um, just so that we have everything in the correct orientation. Okay then, the final piece of piping then, um, it does have a hanger and it has this big circly bit on the end of the curve and this is what is going to go into the V-band clamp that connects into the back box right here. So we're gonna feed this in like up over the axle and then we'll get this hanger into the isolator and then we'll be able to manipulate everything, get this end connected into that previous section, get everything nicely orientated correctly. Once we do that, we'll tighten up our clamps. Of course, we need another one of our regular clamps over the end here um, to connect to the previous section. And then once we have that all tightened up, we will be ready to go on to the back box. It should be okay just to rest that on the axle just for now. So you can see with that pipe in place and with the hanger in the isolator, um, now we have a much better idea of where that previous pipe is meant to go. I did pull it out there just so that I could just realign everything with this in because it is, the hangers are obviously where they are, so they are a really good indicator of where your pipe is meant to be. Um, so now we will connect this bit to this bit via the previous pipe that we had. So what I've done here is I've just, by feel, I've positioned the clamp um, again with my little bit of lip, but not too much lip, um, just so that we know that it's right where it's meant to be. And then I position the end of the bolt um, such that I can get my extension up here um, with a little bit of angle, and then hopefully now I can just tighten it up nicely. All right, this is where we're at now then. We have 
our pipe here coming up over the axle, ready for our back box to be connected. Um, so yes, that is what we are going to do now. Um, first, before we connect this though, I am going to get um, the back box on its rubber isolators. So we have one here and we have one here. Um, and then once we have that on, we can get this nicely aligned with the back box and get it clamped down with the largest of the three V-band clamps that Mountune give us. All right, there we go. So we are hanging, we are in. Okay, so now what I've done is I have got the V-band clamp in place, mating this section with our back box. And it's probably difficult to see, but the two sections are kind of like touching now as they should be. So pretty much all I need to do now is tighten up this nut, uh, which is the exact same size as for the other clamps that we have been doing. So you need to remove this little yellow cap, no matter what you're doing. Um, initially, I'm just going to put my little plug in here um, for the exhaust valve delete. I'm going to leave the valve delete in place. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit too loud, I would imagine. But just for comparison, side by side, because in the stock exhaust, I was running it with exhaust valve delete. Just I want to see what it's like by comparison with the exhaust valve delete still in place. And then I will see in the future what I want to do as far as loudness. I think the main issue is just going to be with cold starts. So we'll see possibly about getting an exhaust valve controller but yeah that is a future consideration if you are doing this yourself and you want to keep the exhaust valve at this point whenever we're getting this tip on you will want to connect your exhaust valve cable in here to the exhaust valve motor that we have got from Munchen and then we'll be all good so yeah now we can get our tips on using the two smaller v-band clamps and then we can adjust them a little make sure that they're nice and straight and then once we do that we'll be finished Got it aligned at the top, mine tune logo pointing up. Made sure that my mating surfaces are exactly aligned. And then I can hit it with my power tool. Now this is a different size, this is a 12 mil. Okay, so bar a little bit of adjustment of the tips, we are installation complete. All right, there we go, adjustment is done, looking epic. So now we get to do the first startup. All right then, here we go, first fire up. Just roll it on out of here. Pop it into well, sport motor track mode. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, there we go. That is the installation finished on the Mountain V3 exhaust. It wasn't too bad, but I won't lie, it was a bit fiddly and difficult and awkward pulling all kinds of shapes underneath the car to get all the clumps off and on. But it is what it is and it's done now and it looks great and I think it sounds great as well. So you'll have seen the comparisons that I threw in there as well. I'm showing the loudness levels, stock versus mountain V3 and that is both of those with the valve delete plug on. And I wanted to do that because it is quite difficult to portray really on camera on like digital microphones just exactly how differently loud things are because you have all kinds of like compression and things going on within the cameras. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea and hopefully you like it as much as I do. All that I have left to do now is to jump in the car and go out for a drive and see how it is on the road and I will report back to you very soon with those results but I am very confident that it is going to be absolutely epic I can just tell from doing some revs here um, but yeah I hope you like that and I hope you like this video thank you so much for watching please do like share and subscribe for more content to come very very soon thank you once again goodbye